Leeds United, the league champions. After that terrific tussle with Manchester United, whom they picked by four points, and coincidentally, four points was the tally that Leeds took from their two first division games with Liverpool. A goalless draw at Anfield in April and a 1-0 win at Ellen Road to Leeds. That was back in September last year. Well, there is something of a party atmosphere here, particularly, I think, from the Leeds supporters. They've waited a long time to be in a position to cheer their team out here. And they've certainly not gone absent. Holidays postponed, I'm sure, and arranged around this fixture for the Liverpool supporters and indeed for the players and maybe even for the manager it's a case of well we're back here again we know what we have to do it's always a difficult fixture to define the charity shield technically it remains part of the pre-season build-up Howard Wilkinson even referred to it as a training game this week <laughs> but Wembley does weave its own spell no one comes here to lose and you try telling the two sets of fans that this is not too serious. Incidentally, the two sides do meet again next Tuesday at Ellen Road, a testimonial match for Jim Beglin, the Republic of Ireland international, who served both clubs until injury cut short his career. And that is an evening which deserves plenty of support. Gary McAllister is the captain of Leeds today Gordon Strachan is a substitute Strachan of course who's had back surgery in the summer but what contrasting experiences for the two captains in the European Championship in the summer Gary McAllister was a star for Scotland and I do detect an extra confidence in his whole manner as he's come back from that competition. And Mark Wright, who leads Liverpool, that Achilles tendon injury in June came as such a shock to England. Since collecting the FA Cup here for Liverpool, he really has found himself in the headlines more for his absences than for his undoubted ability. Dr. Tony Portnoe, the sponsor's guest of honour, at the head of the dignitaries being presented to the two teams. It's a difficult match to draw conclusions from, but this, Andy Gray, will be competitive. There's no doubt. Leeds and Liverpool can't play each other, Martin, without being competitive. It's hard to draw conclusions, yes, because there are so many quality players that, that they're missing from both sides. And Howard Wilkinson and Graham Sinners can say but they're not quite at full strength. But they'll both want to win the game. When you come to the Charity Shield, you don't want to lose a big game like this the week before the season starts. So both, play both teams will be very conscious of that. It's the national anthem next. check on the teams starting with the champions Leeds have expanded their squad but today's side is very much along the lines of that which finished the championship season with such a flourish John Newsom looking a reliable replacement at right back for the injured Mel Sterland Eric Cantona entered more often from the bench but he starts today alongside Lee Chapman and Rod Wallace in attack one particularly unlucky player 
Steve Hodge, who has been outstanding in the other warm-up games for Leeds. Well, Liverpool's list of injuries was well documented last season and it needs mentioning, unfortunately, again. Headed by John Barnes, of course, Mulby, McManaman, Thomas, Redknapp and Rob Jones is ill. And on Tuesday at Tranmere, Steve Nicholl was flattened by a foul and he misses out on the charity shield for the sixth time in his Liverpool career. Bruce Grobelaar keeps David, Joan, David James rather on the sidelines and there is a place in midfield for Paul Stewart and today a crucial crucial battle today could well be how Dean Saunders and Tony Dorigo shape up against each other this will be a battle of pace two players tremendously quick and a big thing on Dean Saunders shoulders will be can he stop Tony Dorigo foraging forward Liverpool without a natural right back in the side that will be a big question who will come out on top well, Bruce Grobelaar is a man with a problem. He's playing to retain his Liverpool place, but he's just been chosen after a long absence by Zimbabwe to play in an international a week tomorrow. And David James, of course, waiting for an opportunity. And Liverpool have said to Bruce, it's up to you whether you go or not. And of course, if he does go, and under a FIFA regulation, really, he should go, then David James would get a chance and of course that's all you ask for at this level and if he plays well in that match which you'll see live on Sky Sports of course uh, a week on Sunday at Nottingham Forest Bruce hasn't made up his mind yet and I don't envy him the decision No, it's a real dilemma for him John Lukic, Mr Consistency is in the Leeds United goal as usual the backup for him is Mervyn Day, the old Silver Fox they call him at Leeds. He played in the Charity Shield back in 1975 for West Ham. He looks younger now, Mervyn, than he did back in 75. <laughs> Paul Stewart in Liverpool Red. A fee of just over £2 million. Eric Cantona, who's the cult figure with the Leeds fans. Ua Cantona is the chant that you hear so often at Ellen Road. And uh, I think it's something of a surprise. David Ellery, by the way, the referee who deals with discipline on a daily basis as the housemaster at Harrow School. A little bit of surprise in the Leeds ranks that both Chapman and Cantona are in from the outset here. They played in Norway on Wednesday and Chapman only came into the game late on. Here's Saunders, wide on the right for the FA Cup holders. A little uh, flick from Stewart. McAllister with Batty alongside him. Burrows making the challenge to just to force Batty re to release the ball, really. And leads up the throw. You certainly sense they have the greater share of the support here. But what part of the match will they be able to dictate? We're lucky also today, Martin, and we have probably two of the most vocal sets of supporters in English football today, and they really are making themselves heard. The game has started, they're really at quite a fierce pace for a charity shield, but the teams have lined up, as we thought. Uh, there are no major surprises early on in the game. Well, such a significant season ahead. The Premier League should be a rich opportunity for the big clubs to raise the standards on and off the pitch. A bit of pushing by Ronnie Rosenthal, whose opportunities have been limited since Graham Souness took over at the helm of Liverpool. But he, like a number of Liverpool players, have caught the eye in the preparation matches. Chapman. Here's McAllister, Cantona is in the middle, Chapman is there of course, Gary Speed who's so good in the air, making his move, and trying to test out this Liverpool defence without what we would call recognised fullbacks. Three defenders in a line across the pitch, Burrows and Tanner, either side of right. But that little example there, that, that to me is lead strength. They get the ball wide to, to fullbacks and the wide people, and they put great crosses in. 
Well, Rosenthal is offside in the end. Just before that, we saw the uh, telescopic talent of Chris White, who may not be the quickest central defender at this level, but he's got great capacity to improvise with those long legs of his. Yeah, Chris is one of these. I don't think I can believe what's happened to him, Martin, over the last few years. I was actually at West Brom when Ron Atkinson brought him back from, from virtually hibernation. His career was going nowhere. I brought him back for about something like 25,000. And look where his career's gone there. It's quite amazing. McAllister. And there's Chapman. Here's John Newsom with Batty beavering away outside him. Newsom perhaps didn't see him. And there's plenty of hurly burly already about the midfield. Oh, White was pressed by Rush, and the ball forward wasn't very convincing. But, uh, but there's an example. The little bit there with, with Chris White pressurised by Ian Rush. Normally, he would have just turned round, looked for John Lukic, and knocked it back. He knew he couldn't, so there's immediate not panic, but there was uncertainty there. And that's what forwards are going to do this season, Mark. They're going to pressurise defenders who have got the ball because they know they can't go back to the goalkeeper and will be looking for mistakes. John Newsom here actually missed Leeds' midweek trip to Norway with a calf injury and then came down under his own steam to link up with the players at the base in the home counties. There was a slight risk about him starting the game, but Mel Sterling still on the longer term casualty roster so Howard Wilkinson will be wondering here just whether this is an early bump or a recurrence of the problem that Newsom had after the Makita tournament last weekend Gordon Strachan would have loved to have started he was telling me in the tunnel that he feels fit enough to play the whole game but it wasn't a feeling shared by the manager He's far more important to them next Saturday, Martin. Far more important. And I think Howard Walkers is smart enough to know that. David Rowcastle, of course, also on the bench, and Steve Hodge. Competition for places hotting up at Ellen Road. It wasn't always that way last season when their team selections were quite predictable. But now I can tell you that even the players are playing guessing games about how the season will start in the Premier League, what 11 will be the chosen 11. There's the back pass, but Lukic has to clear, can't pick it up. Came to him from Batty. John Lukic is the most phlegmatic of characters, but you do sense that goalkeepers are put upon as a breed. Whenever the laws are changed, it seems to affect them. I think we're going to have some fun with this new rule this season, I really do. But of course, Bruce Grubbler has played like that all his life, <laughs> so... <laughs> I know. They changed the rule and Bruce woke up the next morning and said, well, what's happened? <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> Here's Batty. Doing well. Chapman will reach it. He glanced it goalwards. Without eyes in the back of his head, he couldn't have realised perhaps where Gary Speed was behind him. And that's the problem that Liverpool have with this formation, is no full-backs, Martin, no cover. If someone's prepared to get in behind Lee Chapman, as Gary Speed did then, they could get all sorts of joy from crosses. But I just wonder if Gary Speed called for Lee Chapman just to leave the ball. I just wonder whether you would have left it in that situation, Andy. <laughs> I think if you get the call, you leave it, Martin. Unless you're 100% sure, you're going to make good contact. Marsh, now Saunders. It's spun away from Batty and nearly allowed Mike Marsh a touch of the ball in a position which might have been dangerous to Leeds United. Well, Graham Souness and Howard Wilkinson working towards flexibility in their formations. It was a word often used by Graham Taylor prior to the European Championships. I'm sure from the coach's point of view, it's very important to have a, a wide range of approaches. But you just wonder at times whether the players or some players who are creatures of habit 
can cope easily with the continual changing in the demands placed upon them. We shall see. I often wonder what happened to the old way of thinking, Mark. You pick your 11 best players, you put them out on the pitch, and you said, go cause the other team problems. Here's Continent, who played at Wembley with France back in February when he played against Mark Wright. But uh, France lost that evening and haven't won an international since. And we think England have problems. Tanner, a little uh, helping header from Ronnie Whelan. Good to see him back in uh, full fitness. Wallace has straight infield. We must, of course, mention that Liverpool have sold Ray Houghton and Barry Venison as well. So uh, it's another reason why perhaps Saunders is operating wide right on the right hand side. Very different to his role last season. Here's Rosenthal. And uh, Stewart was trying to supply the width right on that left touch line. It didn't quite come off for Liverpool. Rush. Walters wearing number 11. Newsom wanting one touch too many. Marsh, amazing family day for the Marsh clan. His older brother Tony played in one of the uh, warm-up games here. Representing a club from Kirby. Mike Marsh, who was brought in when Steve Nichol declared his uh, lack of fitness for today. Otherwise, uh, Nickel would have played at the back and David Burrows would have been one of the three in midfield. It goes back to the goalkeeper but he can't pick it up because it was played with the feet and now we have a talking point because Lukic could only bang the ball out of play. Andy, I know you have strong views against this change. I just think that is a perfect example of what people like myself who, who have the, the views that we have regarding it. Is that making the game any better when you see the goalkeeper under pressure like that just lumping the ball out of play? I don't think so, Martin. Well, maybe he'll pass it better as the season goes on. <laughs> Certainly it makes the defenders turn and use their skills. White couldn't knock it back then, or if he had done, he would have given Lukic another cause for concern. Dorigo. All credit to Dean Saunders, he was uh, in the hole on the right-hand side then to just make it awkward for Leeds to build up in a wide position and maybe exploit the uh, lack of natural full-backs at the back for Liverpool. Well, there's, de there's definite holes there, either, fl either flank for Leeds to exploit. If they could just switch the ball a little bit quicker, there are big holes there. Well, we've had ten minutes gone and so much to talk about. For fiery characters, Paul Stewart and David Batty come high on the list. It's a free kick in Stewart's favour against Leeds. And it was Gary Speed who was also moving in to support McAllister and Batty in the centre. Batty, I must say, just lets the controversies go on around him, keeps pretty composed himself. One thing about Paul Stewart is, uh, in his past, that he grew up a fan of Manchester United and he's played for Manchester City and Liverpool now, two of the two fiercest rivals to his boyhood favourites. Shows what a professional he must be. Stewart calling for it, but not getting there. It was Chapman uh, who read it rather better behind him. To Leeds. Chapman moving across the edge of the penalty area and they're getting away from Mark Wright. It's interesting. Wright is taking uh, Contenar and then a cut across and Chapman couldn't get free. What Mark Wright's doing and doing very sensibly, Mark, is he's not picking up anyone. But because he's the main header, 
any free kicks or anything like that. He's decided I'm attacking the ball. He's also organising the line up towards the halfway line that ensnared Rodney Wallace then. Well, Lee Chapman made a definite move initially to try and uh, allow himself to be picked up by Burrows, who I think he would expect to beat in the air. But as Andy uh, explained, Wright had the freedom to go across. Stewart, Marsh trying to slide into that channel. Wright saw him coming. Here's Wallace. The defender is Tanner. Leeds flooding into the centre. Out by Burrows. Chapman thought about hitting it first time, then thought better of it. And the layoff was too late. Dorigo coming in with Saunders. He's got the licence to do that. I was just thinking as that ball was cleared there from the, from the Liverpool defence how Gary McAllister must have been wishing it had dropped just in front of him instead of Lee Chapman exactly from the area he would have thrived on The header was from Rosenthal and Fairclough Speed on the challenge from Stewart Front an hour with that Flair and capacity for the surprising switch of direction. No offside, it was Whelan to Walters. Still Walters for Saunders. Well, one thing Dean Saunders might find to his advantage coming in from the right hand side is that defenders might lose track of him, and that's what happened then. Oh, this is brilliant play from Walters though. How aware he was of Saunders' position. Just to roll a lovely little ball to him and he just choked his shot a little bit. Hit it into the ground. But that is an advantage that, that Graham Souness has playing him wide. And that being a natural striker, when the ball's on the left side, as it is with Mark Walters, then he will naturally be drawn into the penalty area. Well, he picked up a couple of goals on Tuesday at Tranmere. And that 7-1 win, which... I'm sure encourage Graham Sinners to put out this formation on a bigger stage here. And Rosenthal was also scorer at Prenton Park. This is Wallace. Contenar, out comes Grubbelard. It needed to be a pass of rare precision to uh, beat Grubbelard's move off his line. Oh, it's been a cracking start to the game, isn't it? 15 minutes and it hasn't really stopped for breath yet. Real credit to the, the both managers and players for coming out with such a positive attitude. Well, it's level at nil-nil still, and it's level on the free kicks conceded. And I must say, the weather is of the sauna-like nature that they've been experiencing in Barcelona. It was quite cloudy and very humid this morning, the sun trying to break through now. Right above Chapman, a little uh, help on from Whelan, but McAllister exploring the width on the right-hand side with Wallace. And he's there as the general again, Gary McAllister. Fontana. Fontana has signed uh, a three-year contract that was completed at the end of last season. A man who's found uh, authority difficult to deal with in his own country seems to have settled in very well here. The only thing Leeds have got against him really is he's being uh, now renowned for a lack of punctuality. Team meeting can't usually start until Eric shows up. And Howard Wilkinson, I understand, hasn't been altogether pleased about that. Well, no doubt it'll be costing him, Martin, a few pennies every now and again then. Maybe a few francs. <laughs> Header out by Wright. Walters encouraged by his run a moment or two ago. Stewart. 
Mark Walters, I'd like your view on him, Andy, really, because I remember seeing him play here as a schoolboy, I think back in 1979, and really seemed to have the world at his feet. And he has achieved quite a lot, but maybe some would feel not quite as much as you would have thought. Oh, I feel very strong about that. He hasn't achieved what he should have done in the game, certainly up till now. He's, he's, he's got so much ability. His, his big feeling has been his consistency to do it regularly, Martin, and that's cost him dearly at every club he's played at. But his ability is unquestioned, and if he can just become a bit more consistent, then the world is still at his feet. It looks his sort of game, doesn't it? We've just seen Cantona indulging in a rapid interchange of passes at high skill. And Mark Walters, when it comes to technique, is blessed. His header, Rush pokes it on, and Ronnie Rosenthal is offside. Well, it was close, but I think the official's spot on. Linesman Alan Hill. But what leads us two centre-backs, Chris White and Chris Fairclough, know is that they have a real battle on their hands. Ian Rush and Ronnie Rosenthal, two of the most mobile strikers around, rely on the, their ability to drag players around, and will do that for 90 minutes. Wheeler. Stewart. He's only got Rosenthal for help at the moment. Saunders now has arrived on the outside. Marsh has got into the middle. Rush just holding on the edge of the area. And left a little uh, flat-footed. Mark Walters actually way on the far side was unmarked. Speed. And then there's a race on. Well, he's left it. I was going to say you fancy Wallace. But he left it to Contena. Great block by Burrows. Gary Speed, a player of so many parts, starting it off in the centre. Rush. Here's Stewart. Well, Rush had got in behind uh, Chris Fairclough, but the ball came far too late for him. That was a brilliant piece of skill, though, from Gary Speed to, to open up Liverpool again there. Showed tremendous strength initially and then great ability to slip a lovely ball through. But really, I mean, he, he, he's aware here, he sticks a great ball in behind the defenders and they just actually get in each other's way. It's a case of after you. No one really took the responsibility to be definite about it and the chance was lost. Yes, Liverpool were very relieved that it just rolled beyond Rodney Wallace because he might have taken some catching. But I think we've seen already, Martin, in the first 20 minutes that if, if Graham Sinus is going to adopt this type of play, that he has got a worry wide on both sides with people getting in behind them. Well, as you can see, we've had just over 20 minutes. And, oh, a mistake now by Fairclough, presenting the ball to Rush. Marsh, Rosenthal, they've still got the ball too. Walters. Oh, and Marsh! Saunders seemed to be moving in for a formality then, but Marsh, if he got a call, he didn't hear it, he must have felt he could have reached it himself. Leeds were lucky to get away with that. Now Saunders, ball at his feet, and a chance to take on White. Well, he didn't do more than make space for the shot. Well, if this is a little sampler which is stored in next season's Premier League, I can't wait. This has been great stuff so far. But look, this is again, see the defender unsure what to do. Gives people like Ian Rush the opportunity to put them under pressure. And watch it when it comes to Matt Walters. This is a skill you talked about, Martin. Step over, picks a great cross out. Look at Dean Saunders. I don't think he's called for that. I really don't. Here's Stewart. Rosenthal. Rush.
Graham Sunes has been telling us he wants to lower his profile. He doesn't want to say too much. He's certainly looking his old self and ready for the rigours of a season in which I'm sure he'll have to make his share of difficult managerial decisions. What he hasn't, what he hasn't lost, and I can guarantee that, is his desire to win. His hatred of losing. He is a winner, that man. And yet, you know, when he was a player, when you socialised with him, he didn't want to talk about the game. No. Now he'll go off and watch Rochdale reserves <laughs> at the drop of a hat. No disrespect to Rochdale. <laughs> I've seen him there many times. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a broad area to cover, David Burrows. Here's Batty. Speed. Tanner gets his goal kick. Nicky Tanner was uh, one of a number of Liverpool players who responded so well to more regular calls into the senior side than he could have expected last season. I think this is a little instant here. Obviously, Gary Speak is in there, really wholly committed. But that little instant will happen in the season. And what you'll find is that attackers won't tackle them because they know they can't use a the goalkeeper. They'll say, well, you try and beat me. In goes Rezata! What a terrific cross. Ronnie Rosenthal was allowed to line it up in looking at the goal and making his contact here. And then it was all John Lukic. That's a brilliant instinctive save from John Lukic. The header from Stewart. Oh, and it's misjudged by Batty, put in by Rush for the push. <laughs> Unlucky, Rushy. <laughs> well worth trying. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You just see it here as it comes in. I guess Paul Stewart gets the header in. And just watches. David Batty goes, there's a little hand in his back. <laughs> Yes, uh, in any case, I think Mark Walters might have been in an offside position. Stewart. Cut out by Dorigo. Wallace, a lot of acceleration down the left-hand side for Leeds. Wallace past Tanner. Contena! Got to it. It is... Work in the air is one of his strengths. He's a big man. I would suggest that that is not his strongest side, though. I would think that he's far happier the ball coming from the other side. He's offside now. But that's the trouble with it, that they have with Mark Wright. He's got to cover a whole vast area in there. And if he can't always do it, and if people like Chapman and Cantona get in between players, as they will do, it could cause him problems as he crosses delivery. Batty now, he's got a defender to play it to, an outfield player. Last year that might have gone back to the goalkeeper. Batty, nicely measured, Wallace. The flag has stayed down, Rodney Wallace for Leeds. Contada, brings it into the corner. And the champions are in front. There is a man who always weighs his words before he speaks. He's in control of his emotions. At seeing lead strike here. It's the space again, isn't it? We spoke about that gap either side. And Rodney Wallace exploits it brilliantly. But look at this. He doesn't panic now, does he? Pulls it across. There you go, Eric. Smash a goal in at Wembley. This is quite an emphatic finish from the big Frenchman, isn't it? And really gives Bruce Cobbler no chance. Just in time as they converged on him, he pulled the trigger. And hit his target. Whether it will be a killing blow, I would doubt. I would think Leeds would have to do more. Certainly when you heard the way the teams were going to be lined up here, 
Nil-nil seemed the most unlikely outcome. And I would venture to suggest that 1-0 is an unlikely outcome. But Contena has given us that scoreline. And that will be greeted rapturously by the Leeds fans who love him. Now, is that dangerous play by Dorigo on Stewart? I'm sure it is. A foot raised. And Liverpool straight away have an opportunity to hit back. An indirect free kick. And this is a chance for Liverpool to put into practice one or two things that no doubt they've worked on the chain ground. There you see, David Ellery, exactly right. Leeds have pulled everyone back. Now uh, Lukic can surely not see too much. Burrows is there. If it goes to him, which it does, and it rather squirms off for a corner but that's what you've got to do in those areas I mean people will look and say well they didn't try anything different there but they're only 16 yards from goal Martin right in front of goal you get a shot in if at all possible and that's what they tried there right coming from the edge of the area at the corner Saunders again with the corner and they came off Stewart's head rather the detriment of his captain, Burrows. Rosenthal trying to stay onside, hasn't managed it. Well, he came as a controversial character from France. But as I say, he's a cult figure in England. and it hit David Burrows on the way through but I rather fancy it would have gone in in any case such was the power and such was the position that Contena found himself in Dorigo Wallace Contena the end of last season scored three times here's Rosenthal he's round the goalkeeper Lukic forcing him into that decision and it's ended as a corner but there's no uh, great certainty at the back for Leeds at the moment in defence of their lead the thrust of Rosenthal then oh and Lukic losing his footing as he moved back was headed back by Tanner on by right and not quite goal with by Rush <laughs> the only surprise about this game is it's only 1-0 <laughs> well wow. the players really are getting really into each other and taking the game to each other it's fabulous to see this, this is Rush almost equalising Matt Wright just knocks it back into the danger area but Ian Rush a little too much on the header. But prior to that, Ronnie Rosenthal opting to take the goalkeeper on with the ball at his feet. Speed. And Cantona. Here's Wallace. Right doing the jockeying. And Burrows can't use the goalkeeper with any great degree of uh, confidence there. Well, I still would uh, start to take issue with you, Andy, about the merits of this uh, change in the law of the back pass. We've had some moments of real excitement, which I think are down to it. It's obviously going to be uh, a major area for debate as the uh, season develops. Burrows. That's Marsh. One thing that has happened uh, in the pre-season, Andy Dibble of Manchester City broke a leg in a challenge with a forward where he had to play the ball with his feet and certainly one wouldn't want to see goalkeepers going down like nine pins as forwards come in because the goalkeeper now can't pick the ball up in certain circumstances. 
Bruce would have an answer, wouldn't he? That would uh, preclude injury. But this is a superb game. Being played with uh, total commitment in terms of the skill on show. Maybe slightly less cynicism that we might see when there are league points at stake rather than a charity shield. Yeah, but I look around this pitch and I see particularly Gary Speed, who at the moment for me has set the tempo for Leeds. His tackling has been brilliant, he's been everywhere, all over the pitch, creating things, breaking things up. He's really given a very fine performance up to now. And it's really Speed playing in midfield has kept Steve Hodge out. And as I say, the uh, Leeds players really feeling for Hodge, who's fully fit again and raring to go and has done so well in the earlier games. And here's Walters. Newsom can't cope, but Speed can partially. Stewart, it was deflected, it will be a corner. But once again, the tantalising skills of Matt Walters here. John Newsom really is in for a torrid time this afternoon if Liverpool can get the ball to him. Look at that, another quality cross, but who is it at the back post? Saving leads again, Gary Speed, and he blocks the shot. That's great play. Chapman led the move out from Leeds, but they didn't clear the ball decisively. Tanner's cross. Lukic has gone all the way, that's a corner conceded by Newsom. John Lukic, who played against Liverpool in the 1989 Charity Shield for Arsenal. He was a loser that day. Well, on the corners, they're all happening at one end. Rosenthal. Mm. Batty had to be careful. It's a great ball by Rosenthal. Rush! 1-1. It seemed to be just a matter of time, and Ian Rush, who was saying before the game, he felt in a hot streak already, and he scored here in FA Cups, in League Cups, in Charity Shields in the past, for Wales as well, it's his second home, and he's done it for Liverpool here, 1-1. It had to come, it really did. Rush takes up that great position, but he owes an awful lot to Ronnie Rosenthal. Produces a great piece of skill, a great cross, but you can't give Ian Rush that type of space and expect him to miss. I think the record books will show that that's Ian Rush's 10th goal at Wembley for <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> Amazing. Nothing better for a striker, honestly, Martin. Charity Shield Day than to get off the mark, it really isn't. They'll have scored goals pre-season games, but this is the first big competitive game. If you get off the mark on that, really is, makes you feel good. Batty. Nicely played by Liverpool, he certainly earned the right to draw level from a succession of corners. Saunders. Tanner, venturing forth. Marsh, good appreciation of the game again, and they want Walters to have it all the time. All except to John Newsom, that is. He's uh, going to regard that as something of a triumph, he's blocked the cross. What they've got to do, though, Leeds, if the ball goes to Matt Walters, what they're, they're leaving John Newsom basically on his own, Matt. They have to double bank on him. They're looking to get somebody like David Batty, one of the midfield players, he's got to go over and help him. Lukic hesitated. Chapman, who you might have noticed was closest to Rush when he scored, but it was the wrong side of him. Help the defending them. Contenar, whose lead has been uh, wiped out. Waiting for Torrigo. Here he is. He looks for speed, finds him. Torrigo again. He came off Burrows. Speed in there. Torrigo. And it's hit by Wallace. Within the reach of Grobola, concerted attack by Leeds, but only for a moment. Oh. This is a great game, Mark, honestly. 
That's a fabulous one, wasn't it? That's what I was talking about earlier, what Dean Saunders has got the job of trying to stop. Tony Derigo wants to get forward, wants to get in there, create things, and he showed magnificent composure in picking out Gary Speed. Liverpool really did live dangerously there. But that's for Dean Saunders today. It's all about not only going forward, it's about tracking back as well. At the moment, Mike Marsh is in trouble. Phil Borsma, who scored in the charity shield here in 74 between these two clubs. Well, David Livingston is down on the uh, benches, representing Sky Sports. David, Martin. first word from you. Martin, unbelievable heat down here. You can see the refreshments been giving it, given out there by uh, Graham Souness. It's quite clear, and it has been clear from the start of the game, about the, the importance of the Mark Walters role in this uh, Liverpool playing system. He's been having a, a lot of attention from the bench, and it's crucial that he uh, goes wide. They're telling him to stay wide on the line, and he's giving uh, young uh, Newsom a, a, an absolute torrid time. And uh, it's noticeable that the encouragement from the, the Leeds uh, substitutes is for young John Newsom to, to really push himself and, uh, and pull out that extra, even though this uh, strength sapping heat is, uh, seems to be affecting him. Thank you, David. That's very much in keeping with what Andy's been saying. And, of course, for Mark Walters, what an opportunity this season. In and out last season with injury, but John Barnes out of the way is an immediate opponent for him. Here's Marsh, just back from the, the magic sponge, so to speak. And Leeds living very dangerously in defence. Chapman. Batty. Here's McAllister. <laughs> the showman at the showpiece. Rosenthal adding to the cosmopolitan nature of the occasion. And it goes to the feet of Waters. This time, the first man to confront him is Wallace. Rush. Oh, and uh, the White puts it out for a corner. I suppose you could say he could have rolled it back for Lukic just to boot it away. But it was a decision that had to be made in a fraction of a second. Andy Gray frowns again. <laughs> I enjoyed that bit. <laughs> Another Liverpool corner. Or well, maybe another Liverpool goal, Tanner. But one phrase I found not to use this season is, he'll be disappointed with that. And you know what I mean, it's said and I hope it won't be said again. <laughs> you might find me using it once or twice. <laughs> It's on the band list with Break the Deadlock. Cantona's header. <laughs> oh, Batty went for everything and he's got the free kick as well. Just under five minutes to go to half time. The players will want the break, but we will. Of... No, absolutely. I think this is one of those games where you don't want half time to come, do you? If you're if you're watching it, it's been quite breathtaking. And speed again. But where will he play him? Howard Wilkinson through the season. We've seen him in the Makita tournament playing as a free man at the back. He could go to right back if they feel it's too much for John Newsom and Steve Hodge could come on the left of midfield. Howard Wilkinson has this at his fingertips. The decision to make. And Gary Speed is the floater, really. But what, what he's got in Gary Speed, and I heard him interviewed a couple of days ago, is he's got a, a young lad there who wants to play for Leeds United, and he doesn't care where he's picked to play. And if you've got that in someone, then you really have got a bonus. And Speed is there again. He'd hardly credit it. This is his first game at Wembley. As it is for a number of the Leeds players, McAllister, Wallace, Chris White. 
Batty, of course, has been here for England. Newsome, another newcomer. That's a foul by Wright on Wallace. It's a bit unlucky, I think, Martin, Mark right there. Great little take from, from Rodney Wallace, though. Good skill, but I think just stumbled over Mark Wright rather than being brought down with him. He takes it there, I don't think Matt Wright actually tackles, it's just that it's more a stumble. A little bit unlucky, but could be costly. Well, there haven't been too many free kicks, certainly not of a sinister nature, but there's been uh, really a, a surplus, if that's the right word, of fine football. It's far more than we had any right to expect. Smashing match, two minutes to go to half-time. Leeds looking to try and regain their advantage here. It's to Rigo, and that was deflected again. Oh, twice the ball has thrown off a Liverpool defender and passed Grobola. But undoubtedly it will go down to Tony De Rigo. Well, Bruce isn't enjoying the best of luck, is he, in between the sticks for Liverpool today. Two goals, two deflections. But this again, straight out of the training ground. Good movement, good little play. And what he does, he strikes it very well. But there's nothing off the back, I think, of Ronnie Rosenthal. Nothing Bruce can do about that. Yes, Rosenthal left on the end of the wall. Well, they say don't turn your back. It's not exactly a new experience for Tony Dorigo. I don't want to burden you with uh, readings from the history books, but he scored here for Chelsea the winning goal in the ZDS final against Middlesbrough, I think it was, a couple of years ago. That was from a free kick, and it's from a free kick here that Leeds United now lead Liverpool by two goals to one. I just wonder as we approach half-time, will, will Graham Sinister or Howard Wilkinson do anything to change it? You know, will little Gordon Strachan be come on for the second half to give him 45 minutes? You know, will, will Graham Sinister revert back to a, to a back four, or, or will they stay the same? It'll be fascinating to see what's in store in the second half. Rosenthal pursuing and well I must say I thought that was a corner and the linesman much closer to it and the referee David Ellery reacted to advice from his assistant We talk about goalkeepers having a difficult time with this back pass rule. Uh, a word of sympathy for the referees as well. Wow, how vigilant they have to be. David Ellery is one of the best. Saunders. And Batty stepping in. But I cannot believe it will get any more serious for David Batty once they play under the Premier League banner. But I must say, what an appetite wetter it's been for what we'll bring you on Sky Sports. The only place you'll see live Premier League football. and uh, this time maybe feeling the heat Wallace and Speed were somewhat flat-footed White out manoeuvring Rush, he will have enjoyed that any more superlatives Andy before oh, half-time? I'm running out Mark, all I can say is I hope the second half is half as good because if it is we'll be in for another treat but the players will get tired and there will be changes and it may upset the rhythm of the game a little bit but I think what we'll see is we'll still see plenty skill on show second half Strachan, and Rowe, Castle and Hodge amongst the lead substitutes so <laughs> plenty of talent there Dorigo Speed Well Tanner made sure that the cross was going to be difficult and in the end it was beyond Gary Speed but it's the last touch of a really terrific first half the scoring went like this Eric Cantona 
for Leeds. Ian Rushworth is customary when we go for Liverpool. And just when Liverpool were really in the driving seat, Tony Dorigo via the back of Ronnie Rosenthal. 2-1 to Leeds. of course owe oh, uh, Liverpool a debt of gratitude for that win over Manchester United at the uh, end of last season that confirmed the championship trophy would go to Ellen Road for Bruce Grobelaar so many season of, seasons have started with the charity shield it is eighth but Howard Wilkinson has never before been involved as a manager of a team at Wembley and his team lead at the start of the second half by two goals to one but it's by no means a position of real security David Burrow is looking for some movement at the throw. And a mistake by Fairclough. It's Rosenthal who leaves it on the ground. What will Rosenthal do? He's not quite sure himself. He finally gets a shot in. And I would think his ears might still be burning from possible criticism by Graham Souness for turning his back to Tony Dorigo's free kick just before half time trying to make a point here early in the second half oh definitely and he gets himself into a wonderful position there probably the only thing wrong he had too much time and he didn't make his mind up quick enough felt sure he was just going to pull the trigger and let go there but he just delayed a little bit too long Here's Rosenthal again. teammates well aware of the difficulties posed to them in the first half by Mark Walters action has to be taken from Liverpool's point of view there seems to be uh, plenty of premium getting the ball to uh, their left hand side to the feet of Walters but this time Newsom but some help from McAllister who approached Walters from the other side Newsom came away with the ball didn't happen too often in the first half did well there young lad I mean that was his first room test second half it was obviously Graham soon as he said to his players get the ball to Mark Walters as often as possible and I'm sure Helen Wilkins has said hey wait a minute if that happens the young lad needs some help but no substitutions obviously at half time and no real change in the, the, the pattern that teams are playing pretty much as you were let's hope the entertainment is as higher quality and he just saw a situation when Bruce Grobelaar could have picked the ball up from a long ball played over his back line but chose not to. Walters. Rosenthal, who's angled that brilliantly to find Walters again. It was a very difficult pass to accomplish. John Newsom certainly showed his potential in the closing weeks of last season. Came up with a couple of goals for Leeds at crucial stages as well. Here's Tanner. Now Saunders. That's wide too stretched to intercept. Well, now what does Lukic do? Now that's what Andy Gray doesn't like, because that is hardly developing the skill of the game. That, that, an example there of Ian Rush, wise fellow players, 
enjoy having him in his team. He, he must have chased for the centre of the penalty box, out to the left back area to put uh, Tony Derigo under pressure. Rosenthal. Saunders didn't quite take the ball with him. Derigo has done that. Speed recognising the positional support he had to give, but Derigo in fact went his own way. Has stayed in play thanks to the good offices of Nicky Tanner. And the outcome is Saunders through the centre. And Walters can lead shut the door on him this time. Well, only through the handling of the goalkeeper, which was admirable. Well, his team have played in a very attractive way, but they're 2-1 down. They played very well and Certainly, oh, Matt Walters has been the focal point of all, most of the, their good attacks, and it looks as if he's starting that way. He looks very, very confident today, Mark. Put out by Wright. <laughs> Here's Newsom. Callister opted to pass, actually, although he probably wasn't aware of it, had time to get into a position where he might have shown the power that he has in his shot. Stayed wide by McAllister again, drilled across by Batty, speed, committed himself, Contenar trying to knock it back across the face of the goal. And thank goodness Gary Speed has that uh, distinctive hairstyle because he crops up everywhere and you could miss him, the markers are finding it hard to deal with him when he surges into the centre from midfield a useful cross from Batty in the first place what he is as well, he's a real threat, he really Martin. he's got this ability to climb very very high and Leeds use him often when he plays wide on the left as a tactic to play long three kicks to but White can head it back and there's no suggestion of manufacturing that header I say can hand it back, the goalkeeper can pick the ball up from a header back, a natural header. <laughs> That's another thing the referees have got to decide. No uh, going down on one knee and kneeing the ball back to uh, get round the law as happened in the early weeks of the uh, season in Germany. FIFA have acted quickly, there have been meetings over the past few days, the players at least know the theory. Offside. close this one but it's always the most difficult one to give when the player is right in front of the linesman foul by Newsom he was probably quite happy that Walters was going inside but just mistimed the tackle lovely work by Saunders as a winger and Newsom plays safe Newsom is big for right back I think he believes his long-term future will be as a central defender. I think he'd like to be in the centre at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Corner, worked short by Liverpool. Whelan. Saunders working hard again as he uh, did so often last season where his future was questioned on a regular basis the ball's out of play and I see even in uh, today's papers there's been talk of Newcastle trying to stump up two and a half million pounds no comments from Liverpool Football Club alongside uh, those particular articles it would be interesting to see if he stays at Liverpool exactly where Graham Sooners will operate with him I certainly don't think it's his most effective area wide right and certainly Dean Saunders on Saunders playing up front would be a far more worrying proposition if I was playing against him Burrows now Walters again and they can't prevent the cross coming in White not really balanced 
Appeared more with height than length. Well, they wear him out, Mark Walters, with the amount of the ball that he's getting. And it's a pretty dominant stage of the game for Liverpool, to be fair. They're controlling most of it and have kept these under pressure since the half. Quickly released by Lukic. Gary Speed, who scored ten times for Leeds last season. That's an excellent return from him. McAllister believes he should get more goals. McAllister again, but it's more often Speed rather than McAllister who moves in on crosses into the centre for Leeds. Throw to Leeds. Coming up to ten minutes gone in the second half. Well, it's Chapman for Cantona. An arm down by his side. And some contact with the ball. But a good little move up between the two big strikers here. Love a little ball into Chapman who holds off. Mark Wright brilliantly with his weight and his body strength. And just look there, the left arm just controls the ball. Liverpool still 2-1 down. Bob Paisley used to say, it doesn't really matter who wins the charity shield, it's being in it. Because to qualify for it, you either have to be champions or FA Cup winners. But having said that, Liverpool won more than they lost. And it's almost a ritual coming here for their supporters in August. 13 times in 19 Wembley Charity Shields. Walters trying to turn it back their way. Oh, and the deflection that was headed back by Newsom. And again, not a particularly fabricated one. It was what you'd expected him to do in those circumstances last season. He could have chested it, and he could have fired it back, and it would have been all right. But if he'd put his boot to it, Lukic couldn't have picked the ball up. Off the ball, oh well claimed by Grobola. Question of judgment and technique, and he got it absolutely right. And a good pair of hands. That was a super stop. Great ball across from David Batty, drove it low and hard. McAllister. Well, work for the goalkeepers again, which was the story of the first half. Still the 22 players involved who started the game. And Rush has got in behind them, onside. Behind Saunders, Rush can line it up. Brilliant stop by Lukic coming off his line. Batty puts it behind for a corner. Oh, that's a great stop, big man. But Ian Rush, I think, will feel he should have scored in that situation. Made the chance with a brilliant diagonal run. Watch that one. Diagonal across the defenders. That's natural to him. And when he got here, I thought, there's a goal coming up. Chooses to pass, and then it opens up for him. But watch Lukic spread his body. That's great goalkeeping. John Lukic, who's been the epitome of consistency without really being rewarded with representative honours in that melee. The player who was hurt is Fairclough. Lukic is now going into yet another season where one would expect him to miss very few games. He's missed none in the league in the last five seasons for Arsenal and Leeds United. And of course twice been a goalkeeper in a championship winning side in 89 with Arsenal and 92 with Leeds United.
Alan Sutton, not too sure, the Leeds physio, how well Chris Fairclough is. Well, the one thing they shouldn't do, and probably won't do anyway, is take any chances. If Chris Fairclough's got a doubt, they'll, they'll have him off pretty quick. Coming up to 15 minutes played in the second half. Leeds, who led 2-1 at half-time, are still in that position. McAllister. Oh, and Grobola, what's he going to do? He's got the ball. And I do think maybe if that happened in a week's time, Lee Jackman would have gone in a bit more wholeheartedly. But it's led to Rosenthal racing away. Is this the equaliser for a second time for Rush? It's not. <laughs> oh, and it very nearly was for Saunders. I don't think Liverpool can believe they're still getting beat 2-1 in this game. And I, I don't understand Ronnie Rosenthal in that situation. This is Saunders' a shot. Look how close this is. Oh. He deserved better than that in the strike, but it was a first opportunity when Rosenthal and Rush broke free. It really was a golden opportunity squandered. Well, prior to that, Lee Chapman went for a ball with Bruce Grobola, and I think in the spirit of the day and the fact that we are technically pre-season, didn't go in in a way that might have injured his opponent. Wallace, Contenar on the far post. And away it goes behind Fontana. That was a brilliant ball there from Gary Speed there that released Greg Wallace. Absolutely super. First time, struck brilliantly. Let me remind you again that if it's level after 90 minutes, we will have penalties. Leeds can celebrate a corner. Speed got a flick, and right for Liverpool. We've left only Rosenthal upfield. And Batty would claim that that time he got the ball, but maybe on the late side. David Ellery was only a couple of yards away. Stewart. The early cross from Saunders. Now Burrows and Marsh. Walters. Rocks the cross early, speed. Got to it first of all. Rush was then facing the goal and offside against Paul Stewart coming back from an offside position. He wallops the ball home after the whistle has gone. Not happy with the lines in the top post, Stuart. Paul Stewart hasn't surrendered his striker's union card, I don't think, despite the fact his career has really taken off as he's been switched to a midfield player. But the way Liverpool are playing with basically four up doesn't give him much chance to get forward to look for a goal for himself. He's got to hold a little bit with Whelan and Marsh. And Leeds are in behind them at the moment. And that's Batty's pass. And the flag is up. The Leeds roar was forming on the lips of those fans you can see in our picture behind the linesman. It's unlucky as well there, it really was. David Batty had just made a, a, a little mistake in delaying the pass too long. Because Tony Dorigo was totally committed to his run. Had the pass been released a second earlier, no doubt he would have been onside. But Liverpool have just changed it slightly, they've now pushed Ronnie Rosenthal wide onto the right and have said to Dean Saunders, just you come infield, play up front, along with Ian Rush. But wherever the ball is and whatever Liverpool seem to do, you'll find Gary Speed for Leeds United. Well, he is going to allow Tony Dorigo to take the throw. I know, uh, at international terms, Terry Yorath is uh, thrilled with the opportunity of using him for Wales. Already got 14 caps, I think it is. Still only 22. Rosenthal, letting the ball do the work. 
And because of that, he's got a corner. And it shows how quick Rosenthal is that he made Dorigo really put his sprinter's shoes on. Liverpool way ahead on corners, 2-1 behind on goals. Spooned away by White. Batty there again, that's what he's caricatured as, a ball winner, but there is more to his game than that. We've seen some good passes from him in this match alone. His tenacity is too much for Waters. McAllister wants to play it long. And he needs the runners for that, and Wallace obliged. Speed's got up with him. Chapman is there. Advantage played by the referee. Wallace may have been fouled, and <laughs> Wallace then just lost his concentration for a moment as Speed wanted to roll the ball back to him. That was a shame for Leeds. And indeed for the referee, who played a part in keeping that attack going. Walters. Here's Saunders. Walters finds up one for himself. Oh, and the deflection comes. Saunders way! A second equaliser this time, and the switch has paid off for Graham Souness. Saunders sent through the middle. And it's Liverpool 2, Leeds United 2. What a pleasing time for a manager, isn't it? You make a tactical switch in a game, and it pays off almost immediately. But let's be honest, Liverpool have deserved a little bit of luck in this game. And they got it. A quite emphatic finish it was from Dean Saunders. Ball broke to him, kind bounce. And the Welshman didn't squander that chance. That's a great strike. Here's Batty. Now Rosenthal. Showing that his part in the uh, change of position is working for the manager as well. And not the final ball. I think it's an appropriate time for Andy Gray to remind us what his uh, scoreline tip was <laughs> earlier in the afternoon. Some of our viewers might not have heard it. Well, I was with Richard and uh, he said to me, what do you find it today? And I said, well, to be honest, I feel there are goals here today. I felt both sides were capable of it. And I went for Liverpool to win 3-2. So I've still got a chance. The Leeds fans won't like that, I'm sorry. But it's been a fascinating and wonderfully entertaining game. Here's McAllister, Cotonaris offside. So, first of all it was Ian Rush to make it 1-1, and then with some very quick reactions to a ball that bounced off Chris White, Dean Saunders making it 2-2. That looked an even better finish then, didn't it? An awkward bouncing ball, but he dealt with it quite brilliantly. Marsh. It was very neat and tidy in his work. Here's Batty. Walters, Stewart, and uh, Fairclough just got there for Leeds as Liverpool look to have a sharp edge to their attacking play again. Ian Rush to me looks as if he's right back on Sonma. That was another wonderful little diagonal run and a straight pass from Paul Stewart. He's now into the area where there's some tired legs around him on this Wembley surface in a real hot, humid day. And at the moment, Liverpool look like the team with their tails up. Well, John Lukic has asked for five in the wall. It's reasonably central. And Saunders having found the range is relishing an opportunity this time to clip it to Walters. Oh. Well, the subterfuge was there to try and catch Leeds on the wrong foot as if Saunders was going to shoot. 
Brilliant. I mean, he's used his head here, Dean Saunders. Mark Watt was a spare at the back post, totally unmarked. I'm sure initially he wanted a shot, but using his head the way that he looked up, saw Mark Walters and dropped a beautiful pass on his foot. Well, Liverpool with the uh, better array of shots on target. But Wallace, is it going to be 3 2 and for Leeds? It came to Gary Speed very quickly off Grobola, and significantly it came to Speed on his right foot, not his left. Well, there's too much action for analysis here. Saunders! Oh, this is ridiculous, this game, isn't it? You have to apologise, or not. Every incident it's been shown again and again, there's just so much happening. Well, it's so difficult for players following up when the ball comes off the goalkeeper at pace, unless it comes right into your stride. Yeah, Bruce does ever so well, doesn't he? Stands up, makes it difficult, but Gary speeds unlucky. It just drops wide of him. But what do Liverpool do? They break away, great ball in. And Dean Saunders chooses to hit it early and gets right underneath it. Chapman. Good work by Burrows, he wants to uh, get into the opposition's half. Hasn't had uh, the opportunity to do that, the advantage played again as Stewart was fouled, and it's Burrows who shoots and, in a way, confuses Saunders who confused him. I think he was right to take it, I really do. Dean Saunders wanted it, but as you can see, he's coming to David Burrows' left foot, he's coming straight in and goal. And if Dean Saunders had only just checked his run and been more aware, then it wouldn't have upset David Burrows as much. But he looks happier up front, doesn't he, Dean Saunders? He's suddenly got an extra yard or two from somewhere. But just when you're thinking that Leeds are lucky to be level, you have an incident like we had a moment or two ago when first Wallace and then Speed very nearly put them back in front. They are rightly regarded in the game. Leeds United is a very fit club. And I think David Rocastle, and this is uh, no criticism of Arsenal, but different methods, different managers, he's found it quite hard to uh, do the work over the last few weeks. Contena. Here's Speed, who certainly isn't struggling for fitness. Dorigo. Batty. Liverpool stretched. Wallace, Speed, Chapman, Cantona, all missed it. Well, the footballing equivalent of the golfer's air shot from three players in the centre. To be fair, I don't think it arrived at any of them just right either. If you watch it here, as it comes at Rod Wallace is when it delivers it, and I think it's just ahead of Gary Speed. I don't think it's ever perfect for him. Just behind Lee Chapman and just ahead of Eric Cantona. Yeah. Eric had no chance. <laughs> well, Mike Marsh is going off and Don Hutchison comes on. Hutchison from Hartlepool, who's been serving his time since his dream move to Anfield and has impressed Graham Sunas in the pre-season games and was very close to being in the starting lineup here. But Mike Marsh, who had greater battle time last season, greater game time, really won the vote because of that. Hutchison at six foot two. Actually uh, played a few games in the low divisions as a striker, but has been used by Liverpool in midfield. So, is the uh, balance of power going to swing back the way of Leeds United? Very hard to tell, but they have the corner. Fairclough. Now Wallace. Torrigo's there if he wants him, which he does. Now clapping again, well met by Wright for Liverpool. 
And McAllister, expect a good ball here. And it's just hit too long. Certainly played into an area where Leeds were getting numbers. Newsom. Well, Chapman's made an inventive run. And Corobola. Oh, he's lost that. Now, what can Chapman do? He's done all he can, which is get the ball across. And Whelan was on his toes, as all the Liverpool outfield players always are, of course, when Corobola comes out that way. But he survived. Can Leeds do against Walters? Well, now it becomes a question of what will happen at the free kick. A free kick that Newsom believes shouldn't have been given. Well, he's got a right to look disappointed, John Newsom. Matt Walters just lost his balance. I don't think I'm not saying I don't think Matt dived or anything like that. But right, he did. He just lost his footing, and it's difficult from the angle. I mean, the referee doesn't have this angle, but as you see it there, it's a little nudge. But Matt Walters just loses his footing. Saunders drives it hard, but too high. Andy, there's a point I want to make about the Bruce Grobelaar incident, taking Bruce aside, is that goalkeepers will be sorted out as to whether they're right-footed or left-footed, because for a right-footed goalkeeper, this is a difficult situation. He's got to use his left foot, and Grobelaar didn't really fancy that, and I think there'll be a number of goalkeepers who, rather than just waft with their weaker foot, well, they might make a mistake. It's, it's an area to keep an eye on. Offside. We're into the last 15 minutes. It's been exceptional entertainment in the 1992 Charity Shield. And at 2 2, it's by no means over. Pointed out. Oh, and Grobola, what's he done this time? He's hit it straight at Wallace. Well, even on his right foot, it wasn't the right answer. Foul on Batty by Stewart. Oh, it wouldn't be a game if Bruce wasn't up to his tricks, would it, Martin? We know it's a charity shield, but that's taking it too far, I think, as far as Graham Sinus would be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, all of the, the viewers will have understood that sequence of pictures. No words from us are required. Free kick to Leeds. Dorigo, one of their scorers, leaves it to McAllister. Cantona, good jump, excellent jump, good shot! What a shot! Grobola couldn't have seen it. Well, Bruce, didn't see it, did he? And he's right, he was right at the whole heart of that move. Won the header and was bright and alert enough to pick up the rebound. Watch this, great ball in. Into the area, Canton is strong in the air. Shows it there, but does it stand about, does it? Look at that. And that's a brilliant hit. That one didn't need deflecting. Well, he had a miserable time here playing for France back in February. But it's fantastic for... Eric Cantona. Now, can Leeds, having gone in front yet again, can they hold on? And Batty says it was outside. Oh, that's a penalty. I'm sure it is. First of all, the referee is going to take disciplinary action here and produce a card for Batty. It's a yellow one. Liverpool have got the ball and lined up on the edge of the area so to their credit Russia's having a look <laughs> to examine the ground looked a penalty to me Mark but oh. well let's analyze the free kick first of all for a free kick it most certainly is Liverpool behind yet again 
Whelan. And the header was by Fairclough. Leeds are trying to make a substitution. And now they have the opportunity to do that. Steve Hodge is going to get just over 10 minutes. Well, Howard Wilkinson, I don't think, can make it quite clear as to who's coming off. Oh, he's, he's indicating, first of all, to the linesman that it should have been an offside, but it's Chapman that's replaced. So, Contena and Wallace, one would assume, would play together up front, but at the moment, Hodge has taken up a position there. Surely he'll find more familiar ground in midfield. But as I've been saying earlier, Steve Hodge has really been impressing the Leeds players with his work in the other pre-season games. They would pick him as their player of the pre-season. Howard Wilkinson didn't pick him to start today. Strachan, as a sentimental gesture, might be allowed to tread the Wembley turf. He looks very casual about the whole thing, doesn't he? <laughs> Newsom offside. And in case you think Howard Wilkinson doesn't look like a sentimental man, on the last day of last season, in the league, the championship already won, albeit. Strachan was a substitute because of his back injury, but he was allowed to wear the number seven and Contena started the game wearing number 14. Not something you see very often in a league match, if ever. That was a kind thought by the manager. That's Hutchison. Trying to get in front of Fairclough. Now, we haven't cleared up whether it should have been a penalty or not. Andy Gray, I'll leave this to you. Well, as I say, my initial reaction is it's a penalty. But as you see there, it does take place outside the box. And that's a great decision from the referee. We're always quick to criticise him when they make mistakes. That was a great decision. First it was Contenar for Leeds, then Rush for Liverpool, then Dorigo for Leeds, Saunders for Liverpool. 2-2, Contenar tilted it, Leeds way again. And Hodge didn't have to extend himself because the flag was up for offside. Head of Batty still, about eight minutes to go for Liverpool to perhaps take it to a penalty shootout as it was back in 74. But Cantona is on a hat trick. Is he going to get it? Burrows stopped him then. And Cantona looks for Wallace. McAllister trying to waltz through. Still Cantona is free to the left and it's come to him. And oh. well, maybe you have to have something of a Gallic feel to you to try and get a hat-trick that way. Oh, they showed great skill, didn't they? Typical of Eric Cantona. Not content to just blast it looking for his hat-trick, was he? He tried the most delicate of chips. Is it Stewart? Is it going to drop for him? And a uh, very effective clearance by Fairclough. Facing his own goal. Right, in fact, slap in the centre of the goal. Plenty to aim at, says his pick, or plenty to avoid. Great run, super forceful run, but it was Gary Speed again who's tracked him all the way back and made life difficult for Stewart. Liverpool want to Istvan Kozma to come on for Ronnie Rosenthal. Kozma the Hungarian who played for Hungary here against England getting on for two years ago Stewart was free 
McAllister's header only to right. This is Walters, who's been such an important figure in the match and at least had a sight of goal to try and be a real influence on the scoreline. Yeah, you can see exactly what he's doing. Gordon Strachan. Maybe her last chance at Wembley. Who knows, at 35, he's defied those who uh, wrote him off when he left Manchester United. And what an achievement it's been for Leeds with Strachan leading them on the field to get out of the second division and to win the championship, get into the European Cup. Yeah, there must have been anxious times for him, the wee man this summer, Martin, when he's had his operation and everything. And it's great to see him back playing and knowing that he's going to be there again at the forefront as Leeds try and defend the league title. So what's happened here? It does look as though speed has gone to right back. Hutchison. Gary's speed is uh, very left-footed. But he's played at right back before in the uh, first division last season. Andy Gray and I have the uh, chance to have the opportunity to give you a man of the match. And certainly I will lean on Andy's expertise in particular while I concentrate on the speed of the game. Speed, I wonder if that's a clue. I think it may be. Mm -hmm. There's been some fine individual performances, to be fair. And it's not over yet. Here's Cosma and Tony Dorigo, who uh, was given a chance to play right back for England in the European Championships while we're on that subject of that position and declined to come on as a substitute against France. And Eric Cantona, was it? Here's Wallace. McAllister bringing Strachan into it. Can Leeds make sure here with the two substitutes trying to combine. Oh, it's stayed in play off the corner flag. Alert work from Wallace. And Cotter has a hat trick. Robillard missed the cross. In many ways, an extraordinary way to end an extraordinary afternoon. Well, Bruce didn't enjoy the best a lot with the first two goals, did he, with deflections. But really, that one is down to his own goal. Basically, a bread and butter cross that come across from Rod Wallace. And he totally misjudges it. Ball doesn't go out, hits the corner flag, but they react quickly, don't they? Cantor pulls to the back step. Bruce misses it. And that's it. And I was just about to say, if you judged the man in the match a little bit earlier, Martin, I would have thought Gary Speed. But when a man scores a hat trick at Wembley, in my mind, there can only be one man in the match. Yes, I would say game set and man of the match. Eric Cantona. But Liverpool have played a full part in the proceedings here. Saunders. That's Stewart. The scoring may not be over. It's a corner. It's a pity the game has to end, isn't it? But to be fair, if, if this is the type of attitude and, and style of play that these two teams are going to set in the Premier League, then I think we've all got a treat in store. Good, positive attacking football. It's been great to watch. Lukic finding it hard to get through the park. Strachan, and it's wriggled in. Mark Wright shot, and 
Gordon struck him, guarding the post, could do nothing about it. He seemed to have taken the pace off it. And then it got stuck, first of all, under his feet, and then behind him. Well, this is a weird set of circumstances, isn't it? You think Gordon does everything right. Good position, stops it, hits his other heel, hits his other heel. And before he can do anything about it, it's in. Very unfortunate. But you try taking this off Mark Wright. <laughs> well, Thinks he does everything right. And that's unlucky. And Liverpool are still in it. At 4-3. Saunders. Speeds header. Here's Burrows. The Leeds fans are urging David Ellery to bring it to a close. I hope he doesn't hear them. Well, we know Liverpool are the past masters at pulling it out of the fire in the uh, closing minutes, but this is ridiculous. They've got another corner. Well, he must have thought, as uh, his uh, header went in, that uh, it was the case of man of the match, but winning the match. But it's still not certain as we move into stoppage time. Strachan is still on the post. This time he hopes his feet firmly rooted to the ground. And his legs firmly close. Well, that statistic suggests that Leeds have done a smash and grab here. It hasn't been quite as simple as that. They've certainly taken their chances. Well, David Ellery will have taken account in terms of adding the time on here. Can Liverpool provide yet another astonishing moment to a game that we'll never forget? It was right going in. In truth, Charity Shields have always been a pleasant way to get going for the players, for the commentators as well. Very few of them live in the memory. The one that between Leeds and Liverpool 14, sorry, uh, 18 years ago in 1974 does for perhaps the wrong reasons when Kevin Keegan and Billy Bremner were sent off. There are very few goals usually. I think Liverpool 3, Arsenal 1 back in 79 when Graham Souness was a player. Gave the lie to that, but not many since then. But what a treat today for all concerned. And it is over. Officially, Leeds United, the league champions, have beaten Liverpool, the FA Cup holders, in the 1992 FA Charity Shield. But it's been much more than that. It's been a wonderful appetiser. And you don't see Liverpool smile too often when they lose, but Ronnie Moran showing the face of their contribution here. It's been spellbinding. Leeds were never behind, but they were never relaxed. Dorigo has a goal, but Contena with three, a clear man of the match. Rush, Saunders, and <laughs> with Strachan's help, Mark Wright for Liverpool. And. They've set some standards for Jim Beglin's match on Tuesday night. <laughs> it's been a thrill a minute. And my word, well, they have made us all glad to be back in business. Fans and broadcasters are like, well done the players. It's been a, a steamy afternoon in northwest London. The sort where you could forgive players for taking their feet off the accelerator as the match wore on. But for value for money, well, absolutely no complaints, Andy. Oh, none at all. I just hope they haven't spoiled us for the season ahead. You're right. Congratulations to the players. They've, they've performed there in a way that we all wanted to see it played the game. 
There was there was passion and commitment in this game. It was a it wasn't a friendly as we were led to believe. The all players involved there wanted to win it, but they played it with the right spirit. They were all positive. I don't think there was a negative moment in the whole game. And I think that's a credit to the managers as well. It's been super to watch. I think we've all enjoyed it. And we all can't wait for the season to begin properly. Well, three months ago, Mark Wright went up to get the FA Cup, but he leads Liverpool here in the new way of things, really, in all the FA controlled competitions. The losers go up first, and they go up to complete applause from foe as well as friend. There's the chairman, David Moores, shaking the hands of the Liverpool players. But Gary McAllister, who came out as captain, has very nicely indeed passed the honour to the club captain. He wants Gordon Strachan to go up to get the trophy. Strachan is hesitating, but not for long, I don't think. He's played a small part in this game, but this small man has played a huge part in the rebirth of Leeds United. On the field, they've got it right again. And along with that, off the field, remember they were regarded as a problem club with a certain section of their supporters. But the image is so much brighter and the trophies are shining brightly at Elland Road. Here's another one. So Bert Millichip waiting with the sponsors, guest of honour, Dr Tony Portner, to hand over the silverware to Leeds United. It's a big trophy and it's just as well they've got two captains today to take the weight of it. But Liverpool more than most, far more than most, know about the winning habit. When you look ahead to the season and Leeds United's task of trying to retain a championship, that's harder than winning it in the first place. Arsenal have shown that and in their inability to do it, but they've come again the following year and they'll come again this year, I'm sure, to make their challenge. You have to go back to the 50s to find a club other than Liverpool who have retained the league championship. Well, I think that says everything about how difficult task Leeds have got ahead this season. But certainly today, and when you remember that they've got Fit Gordon Strachan to call upon, David Rowcastle, certainly Howard Wilkinson can take this side into next season. And what about this, this season? Come, oh yeah, already a folk hero, but after the hat-trick today, he could probably own Leeds by tonight. Howard Wilkinson is a man who weighs everything up very carefully. I can tell you that his players haven't got a clue which team will start next Saturday at home to Wimbledon. The manager has not only increased the depth of the squad, he's given it the flexibility and the tactical approach. And what about Graham Sunas and the three at the back for Liverpool? Yeah, it was interesting, wasn't it, to watch that. I, I, I'm not so sure whether that's the way ahead for them. But you remember Steve Nichols out, who I, I suppose would be a big part in that, playing three at the back. They've conceded four goals. That will worry Graham Sunnis. But he'll analyse his team's performance. He'll sit down and, and he'll consider, should I start the new season with three at the back? I don't know whether it's the right thing. Certainly it was a very positive selection and a very positive thing to do. But, as we've said all along, the charity shield and league points are a different matter. But, let's concentrate on the present and let Leeds United enjoy that. They've had to work hard for this success, they wouldn't have expected anything but that against Liverpool. Eighteen years since they were here for the charity shield.